I am sitting here with David Bradley, who is the state senator from Arizona District 10. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. What would you say to young people that feel totally frustrated and disenfranchised with the partisanship within government and the media? When people tell me I'm not, I don't engage in politics, then my response to them is, do you have any friends? Uh, you ever been to school? You ever go to work? If you answered yes to any of that, you are in politics. Being legislature is being you know, the connector between uh, people and the, and the operations of the government at, at the state level, communicating to folks who uh, elect me. <laughs> and I represent about uh, 120, or excuse me, about 220,000 people uh, to let them know how their, uh, the state is functioning. When I was a young boy, my father ran for office and la lost by like 10 votes. <laughs> so politics is always kind of a, in the background for me. My profession is child welfare and behavioral health services. So uh, as a function of being involved at all levels of that interface with government at many levels, uh, particularly at the state level. The oversight piece is, piece is what the legislature uh, you know, needs to do. We spend somewhere around $30 billion of uh, both uh, state tax and federal tax monies. And the insight is really trying to understand how things connect. If I told you or asked you, gee, what was the leading cause of absenteeism in schools? You know, you might kind of struggle with different things, but the answer is tooth decay. It's tooth decay. Tooth decay. You know, how does this child whose main issue was an oral health problem ends up missing a lot of school, ends up getting connected to some folks that are probably maybe not doing some great things, ends up in the juvenile justice system, ends up in the adult system. And what was the cause of it all? <laughs> it was oral health. Our Medicaid system permits uh, kids to be engaged and to, to receive oral health uh, services. Uh, but what we'd like to do is get more oral health uh, resources into schools. What are the most pressing issues for your constituents in District 10? Reforming our taxes, uh, you know, and the way we uh, generate uh, revenue in the state. Well, under every problem, no matter every issue, is uh, the resources of the state. So it stands to reason that we look at more ways or different ways to ensure that the state has the resources to do the things it's going to need to do. Could you tell us about a notable time uh, there was bipartisan effort to make something pass? The Medicaid expansion in Arizona was a big issue uh, about five years ago, and we needed folks on both sides of the aisle to make it happen, and the governor at that time thwarted her, her own party to, to get that through. Uh, I had a bill a couple of years ago that added kids care uh, to, um, we, had, we had kids care in the state, and we were the only state in the union not to have it for like five or six years. And the bill that I helped sponsor was uh, reinstated. You are part of the Arizona House of Representatives? Yes. We uh, kind of jokingly say that the House is the playground, the Senate's the library. So okay. <laughs> usually the people start their careers in the House. There's a lot of uproar and a lot of noise that comes out of the, the House. In the Senate, 27 of us or so served together in the House, something like that. Could you give us a specific example of the way that you fought for women? My first four elections that I worked on, um, we're all uh, women uh, candidates. Uh, that's how I kind of got my feet wet in politics. A big part of my uh, you know, political awareness uh, of the issues relative to women and having, you know, having a daughter. And oddly enough, uh, Arizona, I think, has more women legislators, I think, than any uh, percentage-wise than any other state in the union. I think that's true. I think the biggest issue in Arizona was the whole funding of uh, teacher pay and uh, the Red for Ed movement, which was uh, you know, national attention uh, when the teachers went on strike for a week or so. To get uh, the, go the governor's attention to change his, uh, his mind from 2% to 20% over a period of time. What is a bill that you have written, sponsored, or co-sponsored that you feel the most proud of? I've had the only anti-bullying bill uh, ever signed into law in the state. Is a, again, it's an issue that reverberates through society in many ways, but it's domestic violence. And what do we know about the, you know, the mass shooters in our society? You know, if we follow the trail backwards, we're going to find somebody was bullied or bullying or yeah. something as a factor. But if we, you and I were to go to the state prison and had the, the entire audience of 48,000 prisoners, and we said, raise your hand if you were bullied, and we'd get about 90% of the hands would go up. So, you know, it's those, again, it's those getting in front of problems. <laughs> That's try, I've tried to make that a hallmark of what I've, I've tried to do over the years. And that's just you know one example of, uh, uh, of something that can have a, a long-term effect. Oh, at some point, we have to stop screaming at one another, touch both extremes at once, and bridge differences. 
And so it, it's, but you can't do that unless you're willing to listen. My orientation towards things is to look through the eyes of children. Most people, uh, when they see it, you know, there's the expression, it takes a village to raise the child. My thought is it takes a child to raise the village. You gotta find common ground. You can't argue unless you first agree. Uh, listen to more Lady Gaga. Listen to more Lady Gaga. <laughs> She's fantastic. She's my hero. Yeah? <laughs> I uh, admire about her is that her, her ability to see through things. Looking into the future, it's really a function of distance. Those, a, a prophet is somebody who can look forward, look through, and see how things are going to be. There's common ground. <laughs> for us to focus on to, in order to build a better future for those who follow, because that's what this is all about. I have eight grandchildren. <laughs> I mean, it seems like yesterday I was playing catch in the backyard with my father, you know, but it's long gone in many ways, and my time will be up, you know, in short order. Uh, and so we gotta build for the future. We gotta do what's best for those who follow. Rapid fire. <laughs> what is the last TV show that you've been watching? Shameless. It's a great show. <laughs> who is a candidate that is currently running that you are inspired by? Probably Kamala Harris. Who was your favorite president, alive or dead? Uh, president Kennedy. It was the looking forward, you know, we're gonna put a man on the moon kind of mentality. And, that, and it's really, no matter what the odds are, no matter what, you know, it doesn't make any sense to do this, but we're gonna go. You know, his message still resonates today in terms of the ask not, which you can do, you know, your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And so that's really what it's all about. We gotta take care of one another. It was such a pleasure talking all to right, you. All right, thank, thank you. you for joining us. <laughs> all right, my pleasure. All right, thanks.